My name's Alex Cosgrove. Um, I've been working recruiting in the analytics and data space for the past 10 years, and I've been really enjoying kind of working with local companies around here, helping them build their data analytics and machine learning teams. Um, I work for a company called AdLib. So we came up with Dive Into Data, um, purpose of it being to highlight the careers that all this um, massive piles of data are creating, um, understand the jobs a bit more, um, help students realize how they can get into these new um, exciting careers. Um, and hopefully by creating connections and partnerships with local businesses, universities, um, the student population, we can fill the gap that is clearly going to happen when all these companies want to get as much out of their data as possible, but there's not enough people to do these jobs. So going to kind of uh, cover off a little bit of what Helen did um, around sort of why companies would move to be data driven, what jobs are being created as a result of this and what skills are needed to kind of cover all of this. So just a few stats. I like stats. That's why I do analytics recruitment, I like data. So how much data is out there? So some of these numbers never really talk about, really. I don't know how many times you talk about zettabytes and quintillion bytes of data, but I've got a few quotes here. So according to EMC, by 2020, there'll be around 40 trillion gigabytes of data in the world. Um, according to IBM, 90% of all this data has been created in the last two years. Um, with the rise of 5G and the Internet of Things, that's set to increase exponentially. Um, today, it would take a person approximately 181 million years to download all the data on the internet. So it's pretty, pretty vast out there. Um, internet users generate around 2.5 quintillion bytes of data every day. Before I did this research, I never used the word quintillion. It's not a number that I'm familiar with. Um, just Twitter users send half a million tweets every minute. Like that's a huge amount of data. There's a lot of value in. Um, sentiment there and whether people like or dislike your product or service. Um, and by 2020, every person would be generating 1.7 megabytes of data per second. So there's a lot of data out there. Like, what, what do we do with it all? Like, how do we access it? How do we get value out of it? So just think of like your typical day, maybe not here because we're not connected in, but in the morning, um, I might wake up, check my social media, check my email. Um, then I might put the toaster on. The electricity company makes a data point of that. Um, I then might use an app to pay for the bus. Then the bus company gets that data. So does my phone company. I might check my online banking. Again, another data point captured. Um, and then on the way to the office, I might pick up a coffee. Again, my bank knows that. And if I've got a loyalty card at the coffee shop I use, they know that. So just on my, from getting up to going to work, I've created some data that's going to be value, valuable for someone out there. Um, so what does it mean for businesses? So businesses that don't use this data, as we've kind of discussed already, they're going to get left behind. Um, I've got a few quotes here. So businesses that use big data saw profit increase between 8 and 10%. Um, businesses that use, sorry, 79% of enterprise executives say they're not embracing big data and will be causing their companies to lose competitive position um, and risk extinction. Um, and then 59% of executives say big data of their company would be improved through artificial intelligence. And in terms of how companies use this to improve, how does it benefit their business? They understand their customers more. They understand more about their internal business operations. They can personalize their products more. They can build predictive analytics and they can start to implement some machine learning solutions. So most businesses out there, they can track who uses their website, they can see who goes on their social media. They can create loads of spreadsheets and sit in there all day long looking at the different rows. Um, they have customer information on a CRM system, and they have various graphs and charts that they might create. And these are the kind of the tools that are commonly used to do this. Google Analytics, Facebook Analytics, Excel, Dynamics, Salesforce, PowerPoint. Most people can use these tools. They're not, they're not hard to pick up. Um, but if businesses want to move forward, what needs to be done? They need to have data storage. They need to be able to analyze that data to bring out trends and insights. They might want to visualize that with dashboards. They want to use data to predict their future customer behavior. They want to use data to predict faults in the machinery, for example. Um, they might want to use data to build algorithms to personalize services. And they might want to use data to add functionality to their services, their products, their apps, their websites, etc. 
So as a result of all of this, all these companies want to be using their data more, um, as well as creating data agencies. Um, it's created a hell of a lot of jobs. Um, and companies are falling over themselves to find the talent to fill these jobs. There's not enough of them out there, so something needs to be done about this. So in terms of what kind of jobs are created by all of this, um, some of these jobs have been around for a while. Some of them are coming incredibly more prolific um, as the years goes on, as the amount of data out there increases. So you need data engineers to build your data storage. You need insight analysts who can create value from your data. You need people that can visualize that data and create dashboardings or decent visualizations. Um, you need data scientists if you want to have a look into predictive analytics. Um, you need data wranglers if you're sitting on quintillion bytes of data, then you need to be able to get that data in the right shape and the right structure so people can actually do something with it. Um, and then once you've kind of got all of your data in the right sort of format, you need some machine learning engineers. And if you're creating a product-based app startup that you want some cool functionality on, you might want a couple of deep learning researchers looking into computer vision, image processing, these sort of things. So these job titles, they've been out for a while, but they're ever evolving. A data engineer now is very different to a data engineer was 10 years ago. Whereas 10 years ago, a data engineer might be building a SQL database. They now have to build complex data lakes on top of cloud infrastructure, and it's, it's a whole different kettle of fish. Um, in short, there's a big shortage of people with these skills. Um, most of my clients try to find these people, try and recruit them. After two, three months, they find they struggle. All these candidates are in high demand. They all get multiple offers. There's not enough out of there coming with the skills. And all the companies want are people with experience commercially doing this stuff. Whereas in reality, there's a hell of a lot of grads out there. There's a hell of a lot of people that are doing online courses that could fill these roles for you. But you just need, we need, we need to kind of help them along a little bit. Um, so what skills are needed for all these new jobs that are out there? Um, in terms of what people might be doing at uni, um, most people in this field, you'd think they'd come from science, technology, engineering and maths. They'll learn statistics or programming at university. Um, but there's a lot of other paths that these people can come from that not as many people think about. So from a marketing perspective, most marketing departments are on a journey to become data driven so you can actually target your customers with meaningful communications that personalize to you. Um, people in journalism, data storytelling is a, is a massive thing. You don't need to be technical if you already passed some information of insight. You just need to be able to present that and to be able to get a meaningful story across from the data. Um, people in media and communications, graphic design, these are all good courses for data visualization. As we get more and more value of our, out of our data, visualization technology is getting better and better, and you can really tell a, a pretty gripping story from it. Um, people in business, in geography and linguistics, these are all really useful skills when you're looking at um, how businesses drive value out of data, geography, you have GIS data that shows where these things come from. Um, and linguistics is a massively useful um, subject to have experience of when you're building NLP algorithms to look at text. All of these subjects have transferable skills, but this isn't where most companies would hunt for their next data specialist. So there has to be some sort of stepping stone in the middle here. It's the same slide. Um, so in terms of the skills actually needed for these jobs, again, before it was Excel, it was PowerPoint. Everyone's got these. But now you'll need SQL if you want to take data from different sources and put it in one. You might need to connect that to Excel with VBA. If you want to do meaningful analysis from your data, you're going to need some sort of statistical analysis there. So you might need to use R, Python, SPSS, or SAS. Um, for terms of data visualization, Tableau, ClickView, MicroStrategy, Power BI are the ones that are, are at the top. And then for machine, language, for machine learning, Python, Java, or R. But how can, the, how can these candidates gain these skills? There's not enough computer science graduates coming out to fill all these roles. There's not enough people with physics degrees that are leaving <laughs> software engineering to come into these fields. So there needs to be something that people can do outside of their new, normal university studies. So. I mean, A-levels, generally speaking, or vocational qualifications in something numerate is handy, but these can be done if people want to change careers um, and move into them. Um, obviously, university degrees is a classic. Um, research jobs, um, any sort of post-grad researcher at the moment is probably going to be doing some sort of statistical analysis on their data. Um, 
Online courses and resources are probably one of the biggest changes we've seen over the last few years. Um, massive online courses, Coursera, Udemy, Udacity, all of these places offer quite nice intros into this stuff and they have a massive, massive chunk of different courses you can do. As I say, not every person working in analytics is going to be building the models. A lot of it's around telling the story, it's around being creative and graphically representing what it is that you want to tell the story of. Um, one thing that we're trying to kind of drive forward within Bristol and the Southwest is work placements and internships. There's a lot of unis around here. There's a lot of people coming out with these courses. Most businesses want people with two years, three years experience. If these businesses can come together, work together to provide placements and internships, they'll soon see that people pick these things up quickly and they might actually be valuable without having two years commercial experience and training them up might be a much better way of, of solving this shortage. Um, there's another online resource called Kaggle, which is pretty amazing. Um, so I worked recently with a maths teacher who was doing these Kaggle competitions in his spare time. He built himself up a portfolio of 12 machine learning projects. We took that to three or four different employers and they hired him off the back of that. So there's all these different routes that can come in. Um, but I really think that like work placements and internships are possibly the, the, the thing that might solve this crisis around here. Um, but when it goes to kind of filling fill in this gap in your business if you have a technology company and you have a big use case for machine learning in your app in your website and your product um, how do you attract these people to your business when every single business wants at least a few of these people there um, there's a few themes that we find that people kind of give us as reasons for leaving jobs and I think that's quite a nice thing to look at in terms of what would attract people in the first place. So a lot of people want to be working with the latest tools and technology. If they can't use the systems they want, the languages, the data visualization tools, then they'll look for another job where they can get that experience. Um, most people want to have a training budget. Um, most people in this space understand that it's constantly evolving, there's constantly new tools coming out. If you're not investing in yourself and continuously learning in this space, then you quickly fall behind. So most candidates want some sort of training budget guaranteed to them when they start a new job. Maybe they get one afternoon off a month just to do some training, do some learning, do some online courses. Um, TechSpark in Bristol is great. Um, if you put your job on there, then you're more likely to attract the best people because some of the best companies are advertising on there. Um, meetups are probably one of, uh, one of my favorite outside of work placements in terms of how you build these people and how you get these people into your business. If you run a meetup highlighting the kind of use cases you're looking at in your company, you get some good speakers along, then you will create that network for yourself and you can get people engaged in your business even if you haven't got a massive marketing budget. Um, research collaborations. So um, we've recently been building a team for LV, the insurance company, which is at Bristol University. Um, what they're doing, I think, is amazing. So some of the PhDs and master's students on some of the courses that are relevant for this, like engineering, maths, statistics, um, are getting fed into, um, into LV's data science team. Um, they are working on real life projects, real world experience. So when they finish this, they are going to have that experience to talk about how these projects work in a commercial setting, which is what a lot of these people are lacking when, they, when they're trying to kind of leave, leave university and, and get a job in, in the commercial world. And then, as I said, work placements, I think that if, if you had 20 companies offering work placements and internships in Bristol, you're going to create another 20 attractive candidates that can go out there into the ecosystem. If you're doing this year on year, then, then we're going to go some way to solving some of this problem with the shortage of, of staff out there. So what are AdLib doing? Um, aside from kind of helping companies find these people, um, we are showcasing career paths. So a data visualization expert, a, a data engineer, a statistical modeler, predictive analytics specialist, a machine learning researcher. A lot, of, a lot of students, a lot of people with the skills to do that might not know these careers exist. They might not know how to get into them, what skills they might need. So on our blog, we showcase different career paths to show how people from non-traditional routes have got into these things, like, like the maths teacher I spoke about. Um, we participated in Data Week um, at Bristol University, and um, we had a few people talking about how they got into data careers. Um, Helen was there, thank you very much. <laughs> um, so 
by showcasing to uni students these careers exist, the career paths within it, and they are very lucrative. Um, hopefully, we can attract more people into the into the industry. Um, research collaborations I've spoken about with, with LV and Bristol Uni. I think that there's a lot more companies that want to be doing research collaborations with the unis around. I think creating, if, even if you haven't got teams on site there, but just giving access to data sets that are anonymized will give these students real world problems to tackle. And it's the real world commercial application of statistics that people need to get experience of to be relevant and useful for employers. Um, Again, explain the benefits of those internships on our blog. Um, we feature data thought leaders on our blogs, again, just to get people excited about what people are working on and just to show exactly what they're doing there. Um, and sharing resources for learning. So we're creating resource pages for anyone at any point in these careers, whether you're switching from a career outside of data analytics to inside one, or whether you're a data analyst who wants to become a data scientist, we're showcasing different online courses you can do that will give you that kind of skill set that you need to move into that, into that new world. Um, and kind of just general advice and guides on how to develop your career if you want to move from one side to the other. Um, we find this is really useful for people who are working in traditional business intelligence who might have been developing SQL databases for 20 years. They're finding their skills are redundant in the future. So we're helping them with directions they can go down to kind of continue their career and, and become more valuable to companies out there. Um, that's that. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs>